Hey everybody, Sean Holsinger here from HolsingersFlyShop.com Bringing you another tie-in video this week. This time I'm going to tie a Helkermite pattern, which is a very popular smallmouth bait here in our area in central Pennsylvania and I'm sure on most of the east coast. The Helgramite is the larva for the Dobson fly. Uh, very nasty looking insect when it comes off the water. Um, big long pinchers on it. Really cool. Google it. You, you'll, you'll enjoy it if you don't know what a Dobson fly is. Anyhow, here's a picture of a Helgramite larva, what we're going to imitate, going to try to imitate, I should say. And um, you can see how it's a very long, long-bodied fly, so we're going to tie an articulated streamer to, to do this. Um, this pattern has been working for us. It's August and September here. We're just into September and August. We've been fishing this fly for smallmouth and having a lot of success. Um, here it is. I can show you in the water. You can see the silhouette of this fly as it moves. It has. It matches very well to the natural bait the silhouette does. And um, one of the keys to it, what we're doing is we're taking a. I'm tying it in the video here. I'm going to tie it on an olive with an olive zonker strip, and I'm going to take a marker and I'm going to color it black with the black marker. And what that's going to do is um, give it a really mottled look. Some of that olive's going to stay, a lot of it's going to get covered up, and it's going to have a blackish with an olive tint to it. And it's very realistic. And I suggest doing that with brown zonkers and coloring them. And also, don't color the zonker strips in olive and brown. And um, do it in black. It's a very productive fly in black, too. It's just like using a black woolly bugger, except this one's a little bit bigger. Because these things will get a couple inches long, seriously. And are big, meaty bait for a, fly, for a fish that they just can't resist. So, sit back, watch it. Um, one of the things I'm going to show you here that's new, that's a new technique, this is going to take a little time to do, but you're going to enjoy it because you're going to pick stuff out, out of it, is we're going to use this uh, mail-in hard wire. This is a, um, it's a steel leader for like fishing for sailfish and tuna and stuff like that. We're going to use it to make our own articulated shanks. So you can see it comes in a big spool. I get it on Amazon and it's like seven or ten bucks or something like that. I'll put the size of it right here at the bottom. It's 108 pound test, 0.22 diameter in coffee keller. That's what I use. Where I learned this from is from John Collins. This is how he makes his, um, sculpin patterns he the articulated sculpins that he ties he makes his own shanks for it it's pretty cool because i've been making my own shanks and i've been making big long articulated things and i can make it to my specifications whatever i want to make it not whatever comes in the bag um, the other thing you need for it i forgot to say here is a pair of jewelers pliers i went to walmart got a pair of jewelers pliers for like four bucks so i'm in 10 or 11 bucks on this and um one bag of shanks one bag of one inch shanks is like seven dollars so and i can do oh, i don't know probably a thousand of them it seems like because i've been making a ton of them lately so give it a try it's pretty cool to do and uh it's a little hard to get on to first once you get it then you sail right through them so give it a try and uh sit back and watch the video while i show you how to do it Okay, here you can see we have our Helgramite pattern. This is what we've been fishing lately. Um, it's an articulated pattern. It has the hook and the main shank. That's where we get our articulation at. And um, it has the perfect silhouette. So let's get into tying it. This is gonna take a little bit and I'm gonna break this up into pieces. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna put our trailer hook on. And we're going to tie the trailer hook down. What we're going to use is a 2557 size 2 Daiichi. And I'm just going to throw some thread on there. It doesn't really matter what color because it's all getting covered up. And then I'm going to take some uh, Helgramite Dub from SLF uh, Whitlock's Prism Blend. I really like this stuff. It's a cool color. Got some flash in it, which is what I like. And I'm going to go pretty heavy on this, actually. A lot heavier than I normally do because I want to cover up the hook and I want to give this fly some real body to it. Um, so let's get this on here kind of thick. And we're just going to start at the back of the hook. We're just going to dub it right up to the eye. So if this gets um, a little buggy, that's great. We're just going to keep dubbing it there. Let's try to smooth this out a little bit. Actually, if you want to, I want to, I don't want to say loose, but 
slightly loose because what I'm going to do here at the end is I'm going to brush that out to give it a little bit extra flash. So you can see how thick I've made it, but I left it so I can brush some stuff out. And then we're just going to tie this off. And now if I want to tie like a half a dozen of these, I'm going to do what I just did right here, right now, six times before I do anything else. I'm just going to hammer out a bunch of these hooks and um, go from there. So the next thing I need to do is I need to make the shank. To make the shank, this is where I said we're using our mail and hardwire. And uh, what we're going to do is I'm just going to take and I'm going to slice a piece of it off the spool here. Oh, probably six, seven inches, whatever. Doesn't really matter. You're going to make a couple out of this piece. So we're going to take it and um, as you see here, it's just a piece of wire. And I'm going to take my jeweler's pliers and I'm going to bend it with the pointy ends here. I'm going to come down about an inch or right around an inch and I'm going to take and uh, I'm going to try to leave this in so my camera stays focused. So I'm going to bend it and what I'm going to do is I'm going to bend it the whole way around and then I'm going to keep going. And I'm going to bend it so it kind of looks like one of those cancer awareness stickers you put on the back of your car. Okay. And the, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take and I'm going to put the pliers inside the long piece. All right. And then I'm just going to bend them to bend that hook around. You see the bend I got there. Next thing we're going to do is put it on the short piece and I'm going to bend it to match that short piece. So this takes a little bit of practice. Okay, there's what you see you have. You have like a shepherd's hook kind of thing. And uh, just put it in the, you can see that these have a nice flat piece in here, right in here. I use that to manipulate the wire a little bit to get it all nice and straight and that's what you're looking for right here now this is a little too long for me so I'm gonna take and I'm gonna cut this off about right there so here's what we're looking for okay this is gonna be the the eye of our shank so what I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna put this in the vise and you can leave the nice big long piece there and I'm just gonna start tying this down and I'm gonna have to push that down together to get them to come together and be cautious when you get back here by that cutoff end it's very sharp so you're gonna cut your thread if you try to go over it if you do go over it go over it very lightly and just keep going lightly until you build a base up over top of it like that Okay, then I bring my thread up here to the eye and tie it off. Okay, now I'm going to pop this out of the vise here and what I'm going to do is I'm going to put my cone head on. This is just like a medium sized cone head and uh, there you can see you got your cone head in the eye. Now, what I'm going to do is I want my shank to be about that long right there, okay? So, I'm going to take this and I'm going to do the same thing all over again with my jeweler's pliers. Uh, you saw how I did it. If you need to watch it again, just rewind, go back and watch it again. But I'm just going to do this real quick and uh, not on the camera here and get it done the right way. Oh, also I want to add, you see how now I have, if I put it this way, the eye is flat, okay? This bend, I want to go sideways. I want it to go opposite of this way. So let me bend it real quick for you. And I'll show you what I mean. Now, also I would add that tie this in a couple different sizes. Make this shank short, make it long. Have, have a variety of different sizes. Okay, I'm going to smash that to correct it there. And then we're going to cut this tag off. Okay. So you can see now I have, let me put this in the vise here. Okay, I put the tail end in the vise and you can see the front end is flat, which is the way I want it because I want the hook to, to match up. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put that hook on and all I'm going to do is I'm going to slide it through there and I'm going to put it in the loop. Okay, so there you can see our trailer hook is attached. And we're just going to tie this down now to attach our hook to the shank. OK, 
Okay, now this would be on the longer side of what I want. I don't really want this the same length as the hook. I usually tie them a little bit shorter. But Helger mites come in all different sizes and they'll be up to, you know, like four or five inches long. So this fly is going to work great. It's, I'm not concerned about the length of it. Like I said, tie them in different sizes and have them in all different sizes. Just you're probably going to be targeting a little bit bigger fish with this one. So I'm going to cover that up. The next thing we're going to do is, I'm going to put my thread back here on the back. I'm going to take some 2.5 lead and I'm just going to cover this shank because you can swing this fly or you can nymph it. I've been nymphing it and having a lot of success nymphing with it. So we're just going to wrap this up here. I'm going to cover the whole shank. Till you wrap, there's a lot of things in this fly that, till you wrap the, uh, well not wrap it, but put the zonker strip and stuff it, it kind of it doesn't sink as fast as I'm used to for for nymph fishing so I like to add a little bit of weight to it so the next thing is we're going to get back into wrapping the thread or our lead down we're still going to cover it up with a little bit of thread so just to secure it so it doesn't ride around there and that's good and then we're going to attach the zonker strip now for the zonker strip, whoops, there's a tip for you. Tie off your lead before you take the thread off of it. So we're just going to tie that up again. And then, oh actually I want to take this off of here. We're going we're gonna to whip finish this off so we can put our zonker strip on. So we're ready to put the finishing touches on this fly. And to do that, we're going to put our zonker strip. Okay, to attach the zonker strip, what we're going to do is we're going to pop this out of the vise. We're going to bring the hook back in the vise. And then I'm going to add a black barred rabbit strip. This is all a variant. And I'm just going to take about a oh, quarter of an inch or so is where I want to put my hook through. Okay, and we're just going to pop that hook right through there. I don't want a big long tail with this, okay? And then I'm going to pull this down. Actually, what I'm going to do, now that I have it on, I'm going to put it below the vise. Actually, we're going to spin it around this way. And I'm going to put my thread on. I want to attach this. I've been attaching this because I like it, like it a little bit better. Um, it doesn't roll around as much. And I like that. I've been having a little bit of problem before I started attaching it that it would roll the hook on the shank. So since starting to attach it, it doesn't roll around as much and um, it has a more truer flight with it. So actually, we're going to flip it upside down now. And then I'm just going to separate the hair. Okay, you can see there I separated the hair right above where my thread hangs down and then I'm just going to make about three or four wraps to tie this in place. Alright, then we're going to tie this off. And I, I like using a big whip finish for stuff like this. You don't have to, it's just easy. There you go, we're just going to tie that off. And then we're going to drop back to our hook shank. So now that we have that tied in, we're going to flip it back the right way. Put our hook shank in here. And we're going to tie our thread onto here. Okay. Now I like to add legs to this fly. For the legs I'm using flex floss. This is a brown flex floss. Use whatever color you want. Use silly legs, barred ones if you want. It doesn't matter to me. I just put them on here for the motion. That's the only reason I add them. Just to give it a little extra motion. And I'm going to tie. What I do is I fold it in half. And I put the two ends over the one side. And I go about a half an inch to three quarters of an inch. And then I take the whole thing and flip it over the top and tie it down and come down the other side. 
Okay, and then I tie these to match, or cut them to match, I should say, about the same length as the other pair on the other side. So you can see how long they are there. Then, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull this back up over, and I'm going to pull it tight, but not taut. I'm just going to tighten it up, and, uh, well, first I want my thread back here to bend, back at where, where I finished the tail off. And then I'm going to separate this hair right above it, just like I did on the back hook. And then we're going to tie down again. Now, with it tied down on both ends, it's still going to have lots of motion, but it's not going to roll around, which is what I want. Okay, then we're just going to pull that back out of the way. And I'm going to add some more dubbing. And uh, I'm going to go pretty liberal on the dubbing here again. Put a lot of it on there. And we're just going to cover up that shank with dubbing. I don't add extra legs. Um, I add enough legs that there just gives it enough movement to it. I don't get real picky. I don't want to be tying all day long. I'd rather be fishing. So we're just going to add two legs at the tail, well at the at the juncture I should say, and two at the head and that's all the legs that I add to this fly. So we kinda got into a thing on the Bugs and Beard page where some guys got to post in some Helgramite patterns and stuff and got real fancy and real intricate and it was really cool. But they spent more time tying than they did fishing. You guys know who you are. And uh, so I just wanted to come up with something that was simple to tie and caught fish. And this is what I come up with. So we're going to do the same thing. I'm going to tie my legs on, bring it over the other side. Whoops. And we're just going to trim them off again to match. Then we're going to bring our strip up here again. And I actually, when I do the front piece, I actually try to leave a little hair on. I don't separate it real close. I leave a little extra hair in there. And I'm going to tie it down right behind that cone head. And then I'm going to cut it just a hair long. And what I do is I take the cone head and I flip it up so I can wrap down underneath it and pull that down underneath and get a lot of nice wraps on there. Okay. So you can see there how I wrapped that down, got the cone head over top of it, and got those legs in there. Nice silhouette of the fly. Last thing we're going to do is put a nice collar on here. And we're just going to put a little bit more dubbing. Tighten that up a hair. There we go. And we're just going to put a little bit more dubbing on here to make a collar. This You don't need a whole lot on this one. Just enough that you can brush it out and it'll give a little bit of bugginess to it. So there we go. Just add a nice collar. And we're wet finish and we're done. Okay, now like I said, what I do next, and I'm not going to do it for the sake of time, is I take a, like a paper plate, lay this on a paper plate, take a black marker to it and go all through this hair and you'll see here the difference between the natural and there's with the black marker. You can see how it's a lot darker. And when it gets in the water, it even gets darker and has a real nice mottled natural effect. Then the last thing we're going to do is we're just going to take our brush and we're just going to brush out this dubbing and give it a buggy underbody. There we go. And that's all this to it. Like I said, just color that up with your black marker. Oh, and if when you do color it with your black marker, it's going to get all stiff and stuff, so you're going to have to brush out the hair again and uh, get the life back into the back into the zonker strip. All right. I really hope you enjoy this. I know it got a little bit longer than normal, and uh, but there's a lot of information packed into this video, so. It's going to catch you fish if you fish it and you like to fish for smallmouth, which I do in the summertime. It gives me a, a break from the trout. It gives the trout a break, actually, because the water gets a little too warm for the trout and it's hard on them. So go to smallmouth fishing in the summertime. You'll have a blast. And do it on your th three and four weight rods. It's even more fun. 
But uh, anyhow, thanks again for watching, guys. Please take the time, if you really like this video, give us the thumbs up because it helps move us up the, up the ladder on YouTube. And also, subscribe to our channel if you're not already. And uh, as always, our social media platforms like Instagram and Facebook are there for you to check out. And if you get onto Facebook, go to our Bugs and Beards page where I was talking a little bit about it in the video here today. But that's where we get together and share patterns and it's just, we call it the Fly Tires Hangout. We just share patterns and, uh, you know, help each other out and have a lot of fun. And we even have meetings at the shop if, we, if you're in our area. So... Thanks for watching everybody, until next time, I'm Sean Holsinger.